Our processional hymn is Hail Thee Festival Day. Please stand. his spirit upon all flesh your old men shall dream dreams you shall know that the Lord is in the midst of his people and it shall come to pass almighty God to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear where our Lord Jesus Christ says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are see at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you revealed the way of eternal life to every race and nation. Pour out this gift anew, that by the preaching of the gospel, your salvation may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. The first reading is from Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel, and in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 104, beginning with verse 24. We will read the psalm responsively by whole verse. I will begin. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide which teems with creatures innumerable, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan, which you formed to play in it, 
these all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth, and it trembles. Who touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 4. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, 
because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. May we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Today we celebrate the day of Pentecost. And the day that we celebrate is proof that God keeps his promises. The promise of Jesus to send his Holy Spirit to be with his people came true on Pentecost. And the promise of Jesus remains true for us today. God the Holy Spirit continues the mission of Jesus to make the way of eternal salvation known to all people everywhere. The mission of Jesus continues to make disciples of all nations until he returns. This morning we look at the promised presence of God the Holy Spirit. We look at what Scripture declares what would happen, did happen, and its consequences for the church today. Because the day of Pentecost is the church's, the capital C, birthday. And I see a number of you are wearing red. It's good, because red is the color of the Holy Spirit. So that's good. It's not required, but it's kind of cool. I'm wearing red. Check this out. Isn't it? Yeah. See, we only get to dig these out once in a while for uh, Pentecost, for confirmation, and a few other things as well. But you don't see red too often in the church. But it signifies the power and presence of the Holy Spirit and how that presence of the Holy Spirit was foreseen in Scripture hundreds of years prior to what happened on the day of Pentecost that we celebrate, the prophet Joel said this, speaking God's words, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, in the future. Now, exactly when would that happen? They did not know. However, that was a promise of God. At that time when the prophet Joel was speaking, the Holy Spirit was only poured out. The Holy Spirit only came upon those people at a particular time for a particular reason. It wasn't for all people at that time, just for some people to speak forth God's word. And then shortly before the day of Pentecost, Jesus is speaking to his disciples in the upper room. And what Jesus says is this. On the day before he's crucified, he says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth. The first helper Jesus is referring to is himself. He is the first helper, the essential helper to rescue humanity from the bondage and plight and destruction of sin. Jesus helps us by dying in our place on the cross. Jesus helps us by being our Savior. He helps us by being our friend. He helps us by being the intercessor before the Father on our behalf. But if that were not enough help, Jesus says that another helper will be sent. The Holy Spirit. And then the disciples were told on the day of Christ's ascension that we celebrated last week, he said this to his disciples, 
Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you will have you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now notice Jesus didn't say exactly when that would be, but he said, trust me, wait a few days in Jerusalem, gather together. In a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And in obedience to what Jesus said, the disciples waited in Jerusalem. So what we have there is that the promised presence of the Holy Spirit was foreseen by God. And then what we have on the day of Pentecost is the promised presence of God, the Holy Spirit, was fulfilled. It was foreseen and then fulfilled. There were many people gathered in Jerusalem on that particular day because it was a harvest celebration 50 days after Passover. So that was one reason to celebrate. But also... Pentecost came to be a celebration of the giving of the law and the revelation of the Ten Commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai. So two celebrations merged, and there were tens of thousands of people gathering in Jerusalem from all over the known world, which we see about uh, and we hear about in a minute. And then we have this amazing supernatural occurrence. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together. They, being the disciples, about 120 of them, we're told earlier in Acts, there are 120 of them all together in one place, Peter and the other disciples. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amazing supernatural power, God's outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all people. And that's the, one of the key things to note about the day of Pentecost and what happened. It wasn't just for Peter. It wasn't for the apostles. It was for all people who were gathered together. All. All. Women, men, younger people, older people, all people filled with the Holy Spirit. And these supernatural things began to occur, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And of course, people didn't live isolated lives 2,000 years ago. Jerusalem itself, and how many people have been to Jerusalem? Yeah, we've got a few people. I mean, the old city of Jerusalem, it's not that big, right? I mean, it's not like our old city in, in Albuquerque. I mean, it's, um, it's small, even, even though our old city isn't that big. But you get the idea. I mean, cities back then were very compact. Like the city of Albuquerque is massive, several square miles. The, this old city of Jerusalem, very small. And when stuff happened, people didn't need a text on a smartphone to know what was, something was going on. They knew what was going on because everyone was just there. They're just all crowded uh, in a very, very small space. And they saw what was going on and, and they kind of leapt to conclusions. These guys were partying. It was a big celebration after all. And they must be drunk with wine. I mean, how else do you explain it? Third hour of the day being uh, nine o'clock in the morning, right? They're filled with new wine. Well, and then Peter goes on to explain they're not drunk. But this is the fulfillment of, of what God has said. Uh, and, and amazing things are, are happening uh, in Jerusalem on this day of Pentecost for all of God's people. And that's the third point is that the promised presence is for all. Women, men, all people. They received a gift promised by Jesus. Fulfilling scripture, as the prophet Joel had said. Because the, the gifts of God that were being poured out were because people had, in faith, turned to Christ and trusted him as Lord and Savior. 
because of their faith in Christ, they received another helper to be with them forever. And the giving of the Holy Spirit was tangible evidence of the promise of God coming true. That in verse 20 it says, and it shall, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved, equipped with another helper to declare the presence and the reality of God in their lives and in the world around them. Yes, on the day of Pentecost, we have a overt supernatural outpouring of God's spirit that was manifested, that was made clear to people. Something amazing had happened. And it, it happened to everyone who trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. People from everywhere showing God's global reach. And we had this veritable train wreck of names in Acts 2. It was handled superbly. Uh, and uh, people from the known Roman world. Folks from places that we recognize, like Egypt and Rome, we still have them in existence today, but there are other folks who are Parthians and Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, essentially Iraq and Iran, Judea, well, we know Judea, the area around Jerusalem, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia. Well, it's not Asia, the continent here. It's Asia, a little chunk of land in present-day Turkey. Pontus, that's kind of Istanbul, Constantinople, that area. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya. I mean, you don't have to be a geography expert in the ancient world to understand that the whole Roman Empire had representation there and, and heard and saw what was going on because God has a heart for the entire world, not just particular people in a particular place. He has a global reach because God has big vision and big plan. And it wasn't just for folks 2,000 years ago. God has a plan for all men and all women, all people today, Greeks and Jews, from all walks of life, to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And it's the job of the church to know Christ and to make him known by proclamation, by preaching, yes, but also by our lives, how we live our lives, how we treat one another, how we love people. Because the promised presence of God, the Holy Spirit, transforms the world through people like you and me. People who hear the good news. People who know that God is alive, that God loves them, and have responded to the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. He gave himself because he loved me to forgive me so that I can have a relationship with God. And through that relationship with God, we in turn are blessing other people who don't know yet the extent of God's love for them. And how do we do that? We do that together uh, in the church. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote an influential book a number of years ago. He was the, the Lutheran uh, professor and pastor who had a, a significant influence uh, in the church or the capital C in the, in the 1930s and 1940s. And one, one of the reasons he had uh, such an influence is that he was in the United States uh, in, in 1939, and he caught um, the, the last ocean liner back to Germany, Hitler's Germany, and wasn't allowed, wasn't able to leave, and he died in a concentration camp shortly before uh, Hitler committed suicide. It was uh, a rather gruesome death. This is a G audience, and I'll, I'll just leave it there. But Bonhoeffer's, one of Bonhoeffer's central points was of, of encouragement to the church that as disciples of Christ, the, the world needs us 
in our life together. He needs the church to be a loving community, a faithful community to Christ. He needs the church, uh, God needs the church. Bonhoeffer would like the, the church to be like that as well. Yeah, okay, but, but God wants the church to live life in such a way that others who are on the outside want to be part of it. And through that, have an influence in the world around us. We gather together for worship as the disciples did. And then God gives us areas of service. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, that there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. In our life together. Doing things together. Not everyone involved in every single particular ministry, however, because of being together, that we have a common influence in the world around us, and we're all a part of the ministry of Christ the King. And I wanted to share a little bit about one that has come to the surface, not because it's the only one, but because it's something recent, and I'd like to share that with you. You know how we have this partnership uh, with an elementary school, Bellhaven, which is in our neighborhood. Well, last Thursday, our representative of Christ the King, Vi, and I met with the principal and staff of the school. It was our year-end review of our partnership. It was a, a meeting of around an hour and a half, and it was a humbling experience to hear how this church has affected the lives of kids, parents, and staff members. One of the things we've been doing is helping with clothes. And you think, it's no big deal, helping kids with clothes. I'm here to tell you, that's not the way people at Bellhaven look at it. It's a very big deal. And they're very appreciative of the fact that that a, a family that experienced a fire where all of their clothes were gone, their kids were able to have clothes because of Christ the King. And there are other examples that the, the principal gave. How the supplies and the gifts that we have, uh, the things for the staff, tell the, this, these teachers that there's someone out on the outside that cares about them and loves them. That the teachers are appreciated for all that they do for our kids. And there are other examples as well about how Christ the King is blessing people outside the walls of this church and in our community. That we're having an impact because of our love for each other, and our life together. Bellhaven has invited Christ the King to participate in the school's community council this fall. We're going to be getting together with parents, teachers, and members of the business community to see how that we can work with them to bless those around the physical location of this church. And we've been given a, a little list of ways that we can participate. And if you'd like, that list can be shared with you, like y'all, in how you can participate with Dell Haven and our partnership with them through Shine. It's through the leading of God's Holy Spirit that this is possible, that this is happening. And this is just one instance of what God is doing because of our church. And it's slow. It takes time. But that's how God changes lives. God isn't in a hurry to make his presence and his reality known. And yet that's, it's exciting to see how we can make a difference as a people by praying and by loving and by serving. 
And that's all been made possible by the fact that we had a, we have a helper, a divine helper, Jesus Christ. And there's another helper, the Holy Spirit, that has been given to God's people to testify about the love of God for us and for the world. And this is a fact that we celebrate on the day of Pentecost. On this day of Pentecost that we celebrate, we look at the promised presence of God the Holy Spirit. The promised presence of God the Holy Spirit was foreseen in Scripture. The promised presence of God the Holy Spirit was fulfilled. The promised presence of God the Holy Spirit is not just for a particular people at a particular time. The promised presence of God the Holy Spirit is for all women, all men, young and old. The promised presence of God the Holy Spirit transforms the world through people like you and me. And God the Holy Spirit continues to transform the world with our life together until Jesus returns. The early, the early followers of Jesus knew his presence and power in a hostile and indifferent world. The world isn't exactly super open to the church, and yet God provides opportunities for God's people to love people and to minister to them. We may not see the amazing supernatural signs and wonders that inaugurated or launched the church 2,000 years ago, but we can see God's quiet power working in our church and in lives around us. That God is able to take a seemingly impossible situation and to turn it around because of the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. Living for Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit means serving people and having a heart for people, serving the last, the least, and the lost with the love of Christ. On the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, let us be encouraged at Christ the King. Let us be encouraged by the fact that we are his change agents in our families and in the world. He's called us to have servants' hearts in keeping with who we follow, Jesus, our helper and servant. We should be encouraged this day to see how God has kept his promises to send another helper, God the Holy Spirit, to be with us, to remind us of all that Christ has said and the truth of God's word, the mission for our church and for the church, the purpose of the church, to go and to make disciples of all nations. And as we go and are faithful to Christ in the mission that he has given the church, he makes another promise declared at the end of Matthew, where Jesus says, to us in the church, I am with you always to the end of the age. My promised presence will never go, and I am with you. Amen. Please stand for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one communion of the Father. Through him all things were made. For our salvation, he came down, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man.
and the last night he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of death and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers, inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness and so guide and direct their leaders, especially Joe Biden, our president, and Michelle Lujan Grisham, our governor, that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your servants Foley, our Archbishop, Stephen, our Bishop, Pete, our priest, and Bill, our deacon, that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and righteously, or I'm sorry, and rightly and duly administrator, administrate your holy sacraments. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, that with reverent and obedient hearts, we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, for those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world, and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for these ministries that Christ the King supports. Faith Comes by Hearing, an organization that records and provides audio Bibles in over 13 languages and Kairos, a prison ministry, a lay-led interdenominational Christian ministry in which men and women volunteers bring Christ's love and forgiveness to prisoners and their families. Guide them, O Lord, and give them boldness to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all who are in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Hope, Kelly, Malcolm, Paul, Bill, Mike, Dee, Everett, Olea, Lena, and others we now name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear, and that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we ask you to give us grace to follow the good examples of all your saints that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O oh God, Heavenly Father, by your Son, Jesus Christ, you have promised to those who seek your kingdom and its righteousness all things necessary to sustain their life. Send us, we pray, in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to your honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and offenses which we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your righteous anger against us. We are deeply sorry for these our transgressions. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Please be seated. Our discovery classes for newcomers are going to be starting at June 12th, but there is a time change. We are going to be moving the time from noon to 9.30 a.m. in the library parlor, and we'll have a children's program uh, at that time. Uh, nursery care is available. And you, if you have not registered, uh, please uh, let me know or contact the office this week. It would be great to know how many folks are going to be with us for these classes. Uh, part of what we're doing, just for the rest of you, uh, what we're doing in these discovery classes is going through the ministry of Christ the King, and then uh, there's uh, an opportunity for, for people to know more about what's going on and so that there's opportunities for applying the gifts that God has given for the ministry of service. And it's also a good time to um, get to know each other uh, better uh, in these classes. Uh, Deacon Bill's Sunday uh, class will be uh, taking a break, uh, summer hiatus for uh, a time, and that starts uh, next Sunday. Uh, the Women's Bible Study is also taking a break, uh, and that'll start on June 20th, and then reconvene on September 12th. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Please. 
Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my willing soul. Let the presence of the risen Lord come renew my heart and make me whole. Cause your word to come The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose most true promise the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, giving them boldness and fervent zeal constantly to preach the gospel to all nations, by which we have been brought out of darkness and error into the clear light and true knowledge of you and of your Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted, and in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit 
these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make you before your divine majesty with these holy gifts, the memorial your Son commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection, glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through this sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be our honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Our recessional hymn is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.